Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing good today. I am sitting here at this little dog park letting Obi run around and I'm just going to make a little quick video here um, to the backdrop of Obi sniffing around the dog park all by himself. So we're at the dog park all by ourselves. There's no other dogs here. He's just sniffing around. And instead of me just talking, I'm going to let you watch Obi sniff around while I do this video. So, as preppers, we're programmed to keep our head on a swivel. But if you're anything like me, my head swivels so much that it's difficult to narrow down and focus on one prepping goal at a time. I'm bouncing from one thing to another. I'm all over the place. Can't focus. And we never want to stop our heads from swiveling because it's extremely important to keep up on what's going on, what's coming from all angles, and it's definitely coming from all angles right now. But sometimes we need to look straight ahead and just focus on the most imminent threat. I live in Florida with water surrounding me on both sides, so my most imminent threat is going to be hurricanes. Fellow Floridians, I apologize. I'm sorry for using that word so early in the year. <laughs> um, I've already seen multiple articles addressing what meteorologists and weather trackers say will be a very active hurricane season. And after the crazy weather over the last few days, I feel like I have to get my butt into high gear. We all know that the weather is probably going to get more severe and more erratic everywhere in the country. Um, everything from the grand solar minimum to um, pole shifts, I don't know, all that kind of stuff I'm not going to get into anyway. Um, just look at what happened in Texas as an example. So, anyone from the coastal regions of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and even the Carolinas should be prepared this year. As a Floridian, preparing for hurricanes should be second nature, but surprisingly, when Hurricane Sally was about to hit us dead on, I saw so many people scrambling for uh, gas, flashlights, water bottles, uh, camp stove, ice, beer, and I was surprised people weren't better prepared, knowing that we are prone to getting hit by hurricanes. And for that one, I actually felt prepared because I had already started prepping. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. But people were scrambling. So I made a little list of things that I'm going to focus on over the next month as far as uh, prepping for hurricanes. So number one is water. Obviously. Water is essential for any prepping situation. Um, it's essential to life. But for a hurricane situation, um, you'll need bottled water water filtration systems, gray water for cleaning and flushing your toilet. In my area, the flooding gets so bad that there's sometimes sewage backup um, and the water treatment plants are having problems and then, you know, you go into a boil advisory, your water's not going to be drinkable from tap. So I have about 45 gallons of water stored up right now and I want to get more. I also fill up my used gallon-sized water bottles um, with tap water and just keep them in the garage to use as gray water. So if I need some water to just rinse off some dishes or wash some clothes, um, I'm not worried about the plastic breaking down from the heat of my garage because I'm not using it for drinking or eating. And then I fill my smaller water, bo water bottles, the little individual ones, with tap water and put them in my freezers. So I have a bunch of them in my deep freezer and my regular freezer, just in case the power goes out. Um, at least those water bottles kind of work as ice packs to keep it cool for a little bit. If your water's not running from the tap or it's not drinkable, you want clean water to drink, to cook with, and if you're lucky, to be able to wash up. If you... If you are without tap water after a hurricane, it could be like a week or two at a time that you're without water. And the next one, number two, is food. Hey, Obi. <laughs> anyway, food, obviously something that many, many preppers, uh, most of you watching, are in good supply of. You want things that are easy to heat up and take limited amount of water to prepare. So, canned food like... 
soup, veggies, fruit, those Hormel complete meals that are already cooked and all you got to do is heat them up or you don't even need to heat them up. Um, some minute rice because it cooks quick. Granola bars, bags of chips, that kind of thing. Um, things that'll sustain you but won't take, you know, a whole lot of heating. You don't want to be cooking like a five course meal. You won't be able to. <laughs> and speaking of cooking, number three is um, you will need a way to prepare your food. In case of prolonged power outages after a hurricane, you'll need a gas camping stove with plenty of fuel including um, butane or propane, whatever your gas um, camp stove takes. And if you have a propane or charcoal grill, make sure you have propane, lighter fluid, matches, charcoal, and all those things to be able to cook your food. Number four is a generator. In Florida, it gets incredibly hot and you will be miserable in your house if you don't have a way to keep yourself cool. Um, so generator, if you can run a little AC window unit on the generator or just to um, keep your refrigerator and your freezer um, foods cool. Um, I do not want to lose all the food I have in my freezers because I've invested a lot of money into that. Um, make sure you know how much wattage you will need to power what you want to power. So, I mean, there's graphs online you can look up to see how much watts your refrigerator is going to draw, how much watts your AC window unit would draw, etc. So, add that up and make sure you have a generator that will support that. Um, I need probably, I want to get like a 6500 or 7000 watt generator to be able to run my fridge and freezer plus my deep freezer. And then maybe I can you know, unplug the deep freezer for a little bit, run an AC window unit. Um, and these are all things I'm going to be working on. So I need to get my generator. That's my next big prep and AC window unit, which both of those are going to be incredibly hard to find either before hurricane or just during the summer. Try to find a window unit during the summer in Florida and it's near impossible. <laughs> um, so pertaining to the generator, you'll also need gasoline tanks. Um, 10 to 20 gallons of fuel. I have 10 gallons of fuel right now and I want to get a couple more um, tanks. Use a fuel stabilizer to keep that fuel fresh up to two years. So normally your gas is gonna last about six months. Um, put some stable stabilizer in there and it'll last a lot longer. You don't want to you know be in a situation where you need to use your generator and your gas is bad. Um, if you have a hybrid generator, which means it takes uh, propane or gas, which is what I want to do, make sure your propane tanks are filled. If you have a solar generator, depending on what size, you know, if you want to run a lot of wattage on a solar generator, you really need to invest some good money in it. Um, but if you have a small solar generator, it might not run your big appliances, um, but it'll be enough to charge your phone, your tablet, smaller appliances and um, like, you know, some cooking appliances, whatever you might need. And number five is going to be light. So we take bulbs for granted. We take, you know, <laughs> take it for granted that we could just flip a switch and we have light. Um, it will be dark after a hurricane um, if there's a power outage. So as early as like six, seven o'clock at night, it's gonna get dark. Um, you're gonna need candles flashlights, lanterns, um, those little solar stake lights that you, you know, put up your walkway that are charged with the sun. Those are awesome. Get them at the Dollar Tree. There's my crazy dog. Um, what else? Batteries, matches, lighters, and fuel if you're using a gas lantern. And number six. I'm trying to keep up with Obi and do this at the same time. Uh, number six is going to be cash. So if places, including gas stations, convenience stores, grocery stores, lose power, um, you're not going to be able to use your ATM card to pay for anything. And people aren't going to just give you stuff for free unless they're really good people. Um, you're going to need some cash on hand. I say anywhere from like 200 to 500 if you can keep more cash on hand. Do that anyway because it's good to have in a SHTF situation. 
Um, but you're, you know, if you need to run to the store and grab something that you forgot a couple days after the hurricane, you're going to want to have cash. I learned that the hard way during Sally. <laughs> um, you want things that are going to prevent damage or repair damage during a hurricane. So tarps, duct tape, plywood, nails, or like a nail gun, um, or staple gun, some sandbags, large towels and buckets. You guys are going to get sick trying to watch me keep up with Obi here. Um, if something flies through your window, your home could flood with rainwater. Um, flash floods and storm surge could cause massive amounts of water to enter your house. You can repair broken windows or roofs with the tarps and duct tape or nail plywood to your window and frames to prevent things from flying into your home. Um, make sure, where is he? Make sure you trim any large limbs that are leaning over your house or close to your house prior to a hurricane coming. Um, we have a lot of live oaks here, these big, big branches. I have a couple over my house. Thankfully, nothing happened during the last hurricane. Um, just a ton of oak leaves all over my yard, but you don't want a limb to fly into your house or, you know, smash your roof. So that was number seven. Number eight is communication. Make sure you have a battery powered radio with AM, FM, weather band, NOAA, um, if you can get one that is powered with um, batteries or solar or USB and hand crank, then you're better off. Um, I have one. They sell them on Amazon for like 30 bucks or something, and it's an amazing thing to have. They usually have like a little flashlight on them. Um, and, yeah, you're going to want that because if your power goes out, you won't be able to monitor the storm on TV or your radio to see if it gets worse or shifts directions. Um, during Sally, I, I'd kind of like gone to sleep at maybe 10 PM or something thinking, you know, it was going to be West of us in the middle of the night, it shifted East. And thankfully I still had my electricity and I had my TV on it shifted East and it was almost a, a direct hit for us. So I'm thankful that I had electricity during that time. Um, yeah, you, you want communication. Um, and if your cell phone, the cell phone towers go out, um, you're going to have no way of monitoring the storm that way. You won't be able to communicate with friends and family. You won't be able to make sure people are doing okay um, and check on them. So communication is key and a radio would be a good way to be able to keep up on things. Uh, number nine, evacuation. So pay attention to evacuation orders and flood zones. Um, you should know if you're in a flood zone um, in Florida. I am in like a secondary flood zone. I think it goes like A, B, and C, and A is the worst. Um, I'm pretty close to water, like really close <laughs> on both sides. Um, so, so pay attention to that. If you're going to leave, leave sooner rather than later. You don't want to be traveling during a storm. The roadways could be blocked, they could be flooded, um, bridges normally close during hurricanes. There could be debris flying around, and it's just incredibly dangerous to be on the road really close to a storm coming in. So if your plan is to leave the area, make sure that you have everything that you, your children, your pets, if you have them, everything that they'll need packed in the vehicle well in advance. Make sure you have enough stuff to stay out of town for as long as a week or up to two. Um, if you're not going to stay with a friend or family member that's in a safer zone, then make sure you have the financial resources to stay at a hotel um, for a week or longer. Number 10. If you're staying in your home, know the safest spot in your home. So you got to scope this out ahead of time. Um, usually that's going to be near the center of the home or as far away from windows and, you know, tree limbs over your roof as possible. During Sally, I moved my her, uh, my mattress into the centermost hallway of my house, and I just plopped it down on the floor. And me and my son slept there overnight during Sally. Um, well, he slept the entire night. I stayed up. <laughs> I was on high alert. Um, make sure your windows are boarded up and that you have your radio on. Just stay alert. If you hear tornado warnings and 
you know, know what those tornado warnings sound like, the t tornado sirens, and be listening for them. Because sometimes they're not as loud as you would think, depending on how far away from, from the uh, tower you are. Um, if there's a, her a tornado warning, um, I believe this is what you do. If you're from, like, um, Kansas or something and you know, know better, please let me know. Um, but you want to get, I believe, into the centermost bathroom of your house and get into the bathtub, maybe hold on to the pipes because they're, you know, rooted into the ground a little better. Um, if you can grab like a small mattress or something or a big comforter, some, some kind of wood or something to put over your head, try to do that. Um, we do get tornadoes, but I'm not as well versed on what to do in a tornado situation, to be honest. So feel free to leave your advice and suggestions. I always love it when you do. <laughs> so that is my um, 10 things that I'm suggesting to you guys and... Um, preparing for myself. Um, this is going to help me stay focused. Yes, there are a lot of other things going on in the world right now from China and Taiwan, Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Iran. We still have to pay close attention to those situations because they could very likely affect us if we're pulled into a conflict. Um, other things like economic collapse, food shortages, pandemic issues, laws and regulations all of that could affect us, but I just want to focus on the most imminent threat for me. And I challenge you to sit and think about what is your most imminent threat, the most imminent threat to you and your family. Um, it could be completely different than mine. It could be a health situation, a financial situation. It could be weather related, um, whatever it may be. Just, just think about what should be the first thing that you're preparing for. And prepare for the worst, hope for the best. <laughs> Don't live in fear, though, because fear is from the enemy. Just pray up, prep up, and do what you can. Thanks for joining me, guys. If you're new here and you watched this entire long video, um, please subscribe and do a thumbs up if you liked the video, if it was helpful. Um, I do want to try to get as many people prepping right now as possible. So when you subscribe, my videos are shown more, more people start prepping. And um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.